Yo, what up, man? Chris, I'm about to check it back in, man. Back with the blog, man. Make sure that like button and subscribe button your way in, man. I appreciate all the support, man. Salute to New Era Podcast with the pack them these up, up hoodies, man. You know what I'm saying? Salute to them, man. They have a show every Sunday. It's one of the funniest shows in battle rap. They have a show every Sunday reviewing everything that's going on in the weekend battle rap, man. Make sure you subscribe to New Era Podcast, man. Salute to them guys over there. Uh... Today is December 1st, and if you've been following Unbiased Review for a long time, then you know what's coming. You know what's coming. We ain't got a sugar coated. You know what's coming. The stock drop list is coming. The stock rise list is coming. I want in the comment section right now, who needs to be on the stock drop list and why? I need to know who needs to be on the stock rise list and why. I'm doing an overrated blog. Who is overrated in battle rap and why? All coming soon, man. Courtesy of Chris Unbiased, man. Be on the lookout for all that, man. It's all, it's all coming. It's coming. It's coming. Nord, man. Shout out to Nord's. Um, I spoke to him earlier today, man. You know, he's in good spirits. You know, a lot of y'all have been hearing that he is uh, lost his partnership. The appellate court um, ruled against him for, for being a partner with URL. It doesn't end this whole court situation. I think now Nord's is still working out compensation. Because even though you may not be a partner, it doesn't mean that you were paid for the things that you did while you were still with the company. I think that's still being resolved. And uh, we'll see if he get any chicken at all in this situation. Um, but yeah, they ruled that he wasn't a partner. So I've been a big advocate. You know, I was on record saying I felt like that I, you know, Norris was a partner. For everything I know, Norris was a partner with URL. I'm not going to act like I know the ins and outs and everything. I don't know their history. You know, I was a little bit surprised that Norbs and Smack was not as cool as I thought they were. Um, I would have never known that from talking to him. He always defended Smack to the core. So I always felt they had a good relationship. So when I did an untold truth and he was saying he never even been to Smack's house, I'm like, damn, that's kind of crazy. I ain't even know that. I don't know their whole entire situation, but they ruled against him because they said that uh, one of the big issues was that when you have profits in a business and obviously Norbs is suing saying that he was not, you know, he's cut out of this whole, you know, deal or whatever that URL is big now and he's cut out and they're making money and he's not getting any portion of it, but he's a partner. And one of the big things that they were harping on in the appellate court was that if you share in, in wins, then you must also share in the losses. And they didn't feel like Norris was sharing in the losses if there was any losses to incur. And I could probably see that because I know early on that I don't feel like probably Norris put money into URL. You know what I'm saying? I don't think they really had a lot of money at that time. Obviously, I told y'all about swag to put money up. But it's like this. Let's just say I was going to sponsor a battle with ARP, right? I wouldn't, and I wanted to, and I'm like, you know, ARP, I got a lot of money, man. I want to see uh, Big K versus A War. I'm going to pay for it. I'm going to pay, you know, both of them $15,000 a piece. I'm going to pay $30,000. I wouldn't give it to A Ward and Big K. I would give it to RBE, and then they would give it to A Ward and Big K. So at the end of the day, it would always seem like they gave him the, him the money, like RBE gave it to him. It wouldn't seem like I gave it to him. So, Early on when Swag and then was paying for like some URL events, I don't think that he was actually paying for it himself. I think he probably gave the money to Smack and Smack paid. So I think early on, even with certain sponsorships and everything, you can still kind of show that the money that was actually being paid was probably coming from Smack and them. So I don't think Norris probably contributed a lot of his own money or was able to prove that he contributed a lot of his own money. I know that he did events. I know he did born legacies. I know he did um, stuff like that. I know he did a lot of that stuff and some of that was out of pocket. I do, I do know that, but some of that was, you know, Gerald McCoy putting in money, all kinds of stuff like that. So a lot, a lot of that is, you know, uh, Norb getting help from someone else. And I know that he had connections. Like he was one of the people that put, you know, smacking him up with, uh, with, with, Floyd Mayweather and stuff like that. So Norris played a part and Norris definitely helped out with the company. I will say that, but I don't think he was able to prove enough losses or any losses at all. And that really hurt 
his case from what I was reading. Um, another thing that hurts Norris that I didn't necessarily know about early on, you know, I used to always talk about, I felt like Norris would probably win. And that was based on interviews that he would say, interviews they would say, Norris would publicly say he's an owner or publicly say he's a partner within URL. And uh, nobody would dispute it. You know what I'm saying? Nobody was saying he was a consultant or nothing. They, you know, if Norris wanted to run around and speak on behalf of URL, they was letting it happen. And that normally would never be a role of a consultant. So I kind of felt like Norris would probably end up winning. I flat out asked Beasley, who does URL consist of? And he said Norris. So in my mind, I can only go by that. However, um, I will say this. I felt like there's a lot of stuff Norris, I think, don't know. And it's a little uncommon for someone that would be an owner. I mean, for instance, like you remember URL did a sneaker event, right? They had like Charlie Clips and Young Ill, DNA and B Magic, all that kind of stuff. Do you know what kind of profit the sneaker event was for URL? Do you know that? Do you know what Cigarellos is paying URL? Do you know what Exclusive Vodka paid URL? That kind of stuff. Do you know, the? you know, obviously he wasn't at the caffeine deal or whatever, but it's like, do you know how many subscribers is on the URL app? These are kind of things that even some of these things, I think even P knows. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like Norbs don't know some of these things, whether they just, he wasn't in those meetings or whether or not he didn't, they weren't telling him, whatever, whatever it is. But it definitely seemed like he went more so alone for the ride and, and more accepted things that he just shouldn't have accepted if he felt like he was actually a partner. You know what I'm saying? So, so that becomes an uphill battle when you're trying to prove stuff to the court, but you don't know the particular ins and outs. And the only way Norbs was trying to find the ins and outs was he was trying to find it through discovery, which means you're trying to get URL to open their books and let you know what's going on so you could try to show this is what I, I should be owed. So that means that you don't really know their books. They, they kept those books from you. And the longer these years go by of them keeping books from you and keeping books from you, it sort of diminishes your ability to say I'm an owner. Because there's so much about the books you don't know. So, you know, that's one thing I asked him when he was at, when I flat out asked him, yo, when the last time URL paid you? The date he gave me, bro, was like four years prior to the untold truth. You know what I'm saying? I think he was saying something like 2016 or 15 or something. I don't know. It was a long time. I remember thinking. And in my mind, I'm thinking, how do you go that long without a check? From them, knowing that they're doing gnomes and some of Madison, they in Vegas with Floyd Mayweather, they this, they this and this. Like, how are you going that long without a check? And, you know, I know he told me he felt like, you know, URL was telling them they're not making a profit and all this kind of stuff. But from my understanding, he was the only one working. They're not working. So, I mean, how can you how can you not make a profit, but also not work like that? That doesn't go hand in hand. Like you got to be getting money from somewhere. So. I just, I just think it was an uphill battle for Norris at the end of the day. I know he's disappointed. I know he fought hard for this whole situation and it dragged on forever, bro, like through COVID and all this kind of situation. And it's just like, you kind of look up and you be like, man, you was really with URL for a decade. And you kind of like, if nothing works out in his favor, he don't really have much to show for it. Like we know his legacy is battle rap fans, but battle rap will move on with new fans and these new fans won't really know the Norbs legacy like we know we've been around forever so to us we always feel like we understand the importance of of what Norbs did and I kind of wanted to do this blog it's not really much to talk about with this whole situation because they ruled on it so I, I don't know the particulars to say whether they right or wrong I definitely was saying I thought I always said I thought Norbs would get some money it looks like that's still on the table about whether or not he'll get some money but losing the partnership definitely hurts probably the amount of money he he could have got if he get any money at all it probably hurts that because if you were could prove you are a partner then at least you could say i get 25 percent. i don't think and, and it would kind of be like probably like easy to get like it would be obvious it's four people break it up four ways you get 25 percent. without that then you're just arguing, I pay for this, I did this, I did this, I did this, this is what I owe. And they're going to say, no, nah, this ain't what you owe. If you were a partner and it was proven by the courts that you were a partner, then you just divvy things up. And then the courts can just divvy it up based on percentages. So 
I don't know what Nor's what the future holds for North in that situation, but uh, URL moves on um, as Smack, Chico, and Beasley. But this brings me to like a bigger issue that I wanted to talk about. And if we're just being honest, bro, Norris hired his replacement. And it's crazy when you look at it and you think Norris brought Nunu Nails on. And Nunu Nails went on Battle Rap Arena. And now she's hosting Caffeine with Jay Black. And she's doing different stuff. She was just hosting an exam joint, um, the final exams. And she has, she's become kind of an integral part in terms of, of with URL. Like, I think she holds... A pretty prominent position like she don't make major decisions or whatever but she's able to kind of like be a voice for them and knowing that Norris put her on and then knowing that hip-hop is real video where she was just like yo Norris is just a, con a contractor any any I guess uh, a lawsuit you always gonna go to something ridiculous um, I don't even see him getting $40 like I don't I don't see him getting anything he was paid for hire the last <laughs> from what I've known since I've been around since uh, 2012 pay for hire he was never in a boss position and I can see how people would think that because of what he tells people and being that the guys don't talk it's just like why do why do they have to t tell people about their business like she just really like threw him under the bus and it was disappointing to see because it's like yo you wouldn't even be in this position without Norris and then you look at Pete and I, I won't play P like P didn't do anything good or whatever. I feel like a lot of relationships that Norris had with people like Rosenberg, Raw, Big K, stuff like that. P was able to massage those situations and make them better because he was independent. Like he was working with Norris, but he didn't have the history of, of the negativity with those particular battle rappers. So I do Norris. I know I know Norris sometimes would be like, yo, just P, talk to these niggas, man, and see if we can book this battle. So I do know that there was a role for P, but if Smack is the face and Beasley is like the record label guy that came over that had a lot of the connections with the artists and Chico was the money man, Norris's position became the most expendable position. And early on when URL was forming, being a recruiter and, and getting people and finding you know, bringing Big T over and Cortez and St. Louis people and all this kind of stuff and bringing these names into battle rap and putting people through the PG system like B-Magic and John John and all that, it became very valuable. Like, I think Norris was very valuable early on because, like I said, he was, a, he was managing Mav. Mav was in Fight Club. He was around Cortez, NYB, and Hollow. He was able to meet people that smack wasn't meeting so he could find these people like yo this is so and so and people were coming to nords bringing him talent bringing him be magic bringing him bridge bringing him t-top it's not smack finding t-top or putting them on it's it's, it's nords looking at the footage saying we know we want to bring t-top to url we want to bring be magic and clean paper and all these other people so it's not really them and early on I feel like Norris played a very vital role in growing the roster of URL all the way up to the latest people like Swamp and people like that all the way up to the latest people. But as URL gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, you kind of can recruit yourself because when they started doing all of these, you know, summer madnesses and all of these other um, gnomes and everything, it became Oh, everybody want to get on URL. And before you had other leagues you can get on, you can go Real Warfare, you can get on Black Ice. You had other places you can go that it, URL wasn't the end all be all. You had, still had King of the Dot doing anything. As URL grew, you don't have to do as much recruiting. Like, yeah, you still need to find talent, but everybody is trying to go to URL now. In the beginning, you were trying to sell URL to people. Like, yo, where URL? Like, where, where the itch? It don't count. No, over here is the only place it count. People still going everywhere. Ballad. It became a point in time where people felt like, oh, I got to go to URL. I got to be on Smack. I got to be on Gnomes and Summer Madnesses. I got to get to this stage. And what happens is, is that when everybody's trying to get to a singular location, and as URL got bigger, everybody tried to get to URL, it makes Norris recruiting job a lot easier. You don't have to do as much selling because everybody wants to get there. And everybody now, instead of you having to find footage, everybody's sending you footage now. Like, yo, Norris, put me on, put me on, put me on. And Norris started having scouts. 
he started having P. He started having like other people like, you know, I think um, I can't even remember their names right now. So what happens is URL probably felt like we can always find talent because everybody is trying to come here anyway. So all we got to do is look for talent, get somebody to do it. like all we got to do, like anybody can look at a couple ballers and see if they dope or not. So I feel like URL and when I say URL, I mean Chico Beasley and, and, and Smack. I feel like Norris became expendable. And when he brought P on and when he brought P on, P became like the guy with no issues. He didn't have an issue with Chico. He didn't have an issue with nobody within the company. He got along with Nunu Nails for a little minute. Um, he didn't really have, you know, maybe he was a yes man or whatever, where they felt like Norris wasn't. And P was just like, yo, I'm from the DMV, Jack Boy Main Drugs. New Jersey twerk, all these guys. So that's how we, that's how you got that DMV influx of ballers that P was pushing. And P probably felt like I can find talent just like Norbs can. And even though finding talent is a great thing for a company, they probably value Chico, Beasley, and Smack the most. Smack the face, Beasley, the record label guy who knows all the artists, and Chico, the money man, and the computer guy. And as they grew, I just feel like Norris became expendable. And basically, Norris hired his replacement. P became his replacement. He became the recruiter. And as he got buddy buddy up with URL and Chico and rubbing shoulders, it just pushed Norris out the door. And, it, and it's crazy that in battle rap, you can put a nigga on and then that nigga can just pop off of you. That's one reason why I never do nothing with anybody. The only time I ever did anything is with uh, Mickey Fax. And he's already known. But if you look at this tree, Angry Fan put three Letterman on. He put um, Timbo on. He put uh, Tony Bro on. Polo on. They put Cola on. You see what I'm saying? The list goes on of like people you can put on. And then ultimately, at some point in time, even though they seem cool now, all of these guys fell out at one point in time. So when I be looking at Norris in them situation, I just be like, yo, you really be putting on people, they be blowing up under you, and then y'all fall out, and then the niggas be like, fuck you. And that's like essentially what happened. So what happened is that at one point in time, Three Letterman was like F caps. Timbo then was like F caps. Uh um, Tony Bro, all them, they was going at caps. It seems like every time that you put somebody on in battle rap or you be cool with somebody, y'all work together, y'all end up falling out. It's like they get they get popularity off of you and then for some reason they just forget where they come from or y'all just fall out or they just don't need you or maybe you you under or maybe you underestimate them and belittle them. I don't know what it is, but somehow y'all fall out, they move up off of your name, and then later so lo and behold, they think they're better than you. If you ask P right now, he'll tell you he's better than Norris. But Norris put them on. You ask Tony Bro and all that, they probably think they better than Caps. But Caps put them on. That happens a lot in battle rap, and it's scary because a lot of people have tried to collab with me and do different stuff, and I be thinking like, yo, it's so easy for me to do something with someone and put them on, and I be looking at someone like P and Nords and Nunu Nails, and I be like, why couldn't that work? It's all ego at the like all that shit is ego at the end of the day, and it's just it's just crazy um, how this stuff played out to see everybody move on and be on stage with this rock, you know, these pom-poms for URL and Norbs is sitting here, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, Norbs unfortunately didn't have his paperwork right or didn't have any paperwork and just didn't know enough stuff. He just didn't have, know enough stuff apparently. And I don't want to really hate on his lawyers because I know that's going to be like a critique, like, Oh, maybe he should have got better lawyer lawyers. I didn't get the impression that Norris had the money to really go out and hire a high prof profile lawyer. Norris was the only one within URL that I knew that was working. I don't think Beasley and like when they were doing Gnome Fives and Gnome Sixes and all that, I used to go to New York. Norris was working, bro. I think Norris was driving an Uber or something. He was working doing something. I don't see Chico, Beasley, and Smack going clocking in. So all these guys are working. Meanwhile, Norris is perceived to be an owner, but he's actually working a nine to five. So when he filed a lawsuit, it was some guys that felt like they were lawyers and they would take the job pro bono and kudos to them. I think they did the best they could, but clearly they are young, slightly inexperienced, 
and learning on the fly. So, you know, money goes a long way with what you can afford and the type of lawyer that you can afford. You know, you can afford someone with a lot of experience. And obviously, you are real, got that caffeine money. They can afford a much better lawyer. So a lot of y'all critique Norbs and say, oh, just get a better lawyer. Bro, that shit ain't cheap, bro. It's not cheap at all. Just a lawyer on my case, $15,000. It's not cheap. So it's a lot of money for that. And, and I think Norris at the time didn't really have the spin. You got to understand, just had a newborn when all this stuff happened with Twerk and he got let go. Just moved to Atlanta recently, you know, a little bit before that. He's trying to get his life in order and be like, oh, I'm going to drop a whole bunch of money on a civil suit. You got to pay these people. Look how long this case been dragged out. You got to continue it continue to pay a lawyer and that's hard to do so a pro bono lawyer I take it and then hope that if you win they can get some money off of it based on legal fees and um so yeah that's what's going on man. i just wanted to give y'all an update um it's not completely over i think maybe the compensation part is what they're working out hopefully he gets some compensation maybe he doesn't get any compensation i don't know but the partnership is officially ended now we know that norris is not an owner by law you know what i'm saying by law they, they legally ruled on that so let me know your thoughts man chris i'm biased holla at your boy